Hello everybody, meteorologist Jacob Campbell here with your WeatherNow forecast. This is the forecast for uh, Thursday and Friday. However, I also have the Wednesday storm risk here because it did get upgraded while I was talking about the whole snow incident. And I wanted to focus this video more so on the uh, warm sector, the sector where you're not going to see snow, but you're going to see uh, thunderstorms. So this is the SPC's data, and they've got essentially this area stretching from Arizona up to Wisconsin in a thunderstorm risk. And so that really just depends on when the, uh, you pass into the cold sector and when you're in the warm sector, because there's some areas here like Sioux Falls and Minneapolis that are expecting a lot of snow, but they can also expect thunderstorms if they pass into the warm sector of the storm, which is just the area in between the cold front and the warm front. Um, so we've got another area here more in the Nebraska, Nebraska, uh, Iowa area where you are in a marginal risk for severe storms. And then we've got our, uh, um, slight risk here and an enhanced risk in the Kansas, Nebraska area. And so basically if you live in this area, um, large hail is going to be the primary threat. So there's going to be a lot of convective, um, air essentially so air that that is capable of convection in that area and so what we've got what we're seeing is we're seeing some elevated areas of warm air which means that the air is actually fairly stable but depending on how much the sun is able to heat the ground the air below that could end up getting uh warmer than that and if that happens then you would break through it's called a cap if you break through the cap um, you can trigger some very intense um, updrafts and some very intense convection. And so that's why in those areas you've, you're under the enhanced risk for severe storms and then slight risk around that. Just, in, you know, if, if those little caps do break, then you could be looking at some uh, thunderstorms capable of producing hail. Moving on to Thursday we see that entire severe storm risk shift to uh, the, the east. <clears throat> and we've got a slight risk of severe storms just west of Indianapolis in Evansville, the Gary, Indiana area, and then just south of Chicago, whereas in the areas around that, the St. Louis, Chicago, Indian Indianapolis area, you guys are in a marginal risk of severe storms. And in the surrounding areas uh, through Michigan, through Wisconsin and Minnesota, Iowa, um, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, part of Alabama, and about half of Tennessee and Kentucky. I forgot about Kentucky, sorry. And uh, Ohio, you guys are in a just a thunderstorm risk. And so the largest risk with these storms is going to be very strong winds. And I'll show you a radar, uh, a H triple R, a high rapid refresh, res high resolution rapid refresh, sorry, model. Um, uh, here in just a couple of minutes, but very strong winds are the primary threat here. Uh, there's not a whole lot of convective um, uh, cape, so you're not going to see some storms that produce a lot of hail, and you're also not going to see tornadoes in this. You may you may see a couple, and wind is, is also a, a, a small threat. I think it's a 5% threat, uh, whereas sorry, not wind, hail, I think is a 5% threat, whereas hail is at a 15, I believe. Um, and so if you live in those areas, you can expect some very strong winds. And it's just in the way that this storm is moving and how the upper level air at about the 500 millibar level is acting. Uh, we've got the, the little trough that the, the little short wave that's really triggering this, this, um, snowstorm, the winter storm Wesley out in the Great Plains. Essentially, this area is now on a accelerated side of that short wave, so the winds are very, very powerful up there. It's almost causing like a little jet stream, and so it's just channeling air through this area here. and And you'll see on the radar how the the um, how the storms are gonna work on Thursday. So, going into the day on Friday. There's another system, another little uh, shortwave forming out near Dallas, 
and it will be making its way through the country for the rest of the week or for this weekend and this is the next big system that I have my eye on so I will keep you all up to date this is Friday by the way I'll keep you all up to date on what this system is doing while watching Winter Storm Wesley to see what that's doing but this is going to be the next big story it looks like uh, Louisiana Mississippi and Arkansas may be in the crosshairs for this storm so like I said I will keep you all up to date Dallas is under this marginal risk of severe storms, and it appears to just be a uh, wind threat primarily, uh, but hail is also possible, so the SPC, I believe, is talking about upgrading this to a slight risk. But then for the rest of the country, the area in the warm sector of Winter Storm Wesley, and then pretty much everywhere east of that, um, you can expect just some thunderstorm activity, but nothing too severe. So moving on next, we've got the HRRR model. And so we see this, here we are, yep. Yeah. So we see this low pressure system over here in the cold sector above and to the left of the cold front, to the west of the cold front forming. And so then we see another kind of cold front pop up in front of the storm and it's going to build into the Midwestern area, this Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky area that we were talking about. This, uh, this is in the day this is late night Thursday into early morning Friday, so we may see an upgrade on that Friday slight risk. Um, but we see it, and we see also see that, that these storms are, are forming a line, and if this model were to continue, you would see all of these storms moving to the north. And so that implies that there are very strong winds in the upper level that are kind of forcing the storm to the north. But then we also see this area of snow. The Nebraska, uh, the Nebraska South Dakota area is just going to get coated with snow from this because you see they're in it, they're still in it, they're still in it, they're still in it, and it's already Friday. So they've been in this kind of snowy sector of the storm for the majority of uh, Winter Storm Wesley's kind of existence. Um, so as I said, I'm going to keep watching that. And I also have some updated snow totals here at the end of this video as well. Moving on. Oh, not at the end of this video right now. So going to snow totals for winter storm Wesley, uh, we see that this area of 24 to 30 inches is, is pushed South the H triple R model and the, um, the H triple R model and the, uh, GFS model have both put a 24 to 30 inch uh, band here in northern Nebraska and then there's the band around it with uh, 16 to 24 inches that is also pushing into uh, Nebraska as well and so the same kind of blizzard the blizzard like um, conditions are going to be in this area so if you live in this area please take all the precautions necessary that's the main update. There's not really very much else to talk about, although except for Iowa has been um, actually a large portion of Iowa has been lifted out of a snow risk because it looks like they're primarily going to be hit by the warm sector of the storm. Moving on to temperatures, these are the high temperatures on Thursday. So we see we can clearly see where this is. Uh, this low pressure system, Winter Storm Wesley, is 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 kind of he's kind of sitting right here on the edge of Nebraska and Iowa. And so you can see the warm front here. It means warm air behind cold air. And this is where primary, like this is where a lot of um, snow and rain is. And then we see the cold front here, which behind the cold front, you'll see some snow and in front of the cold front, you'll see thunderstorms. And so you can really, it's very well defined because cold front is cold air behind warm air. Um, and this is almost like a textbook, uh, low pressure system and so we see areas in the Great Plains being affected by this blizzard in the in the 20s and parts of it may be getting in the teens although that could be an anomaly and then if you live right on those fronts 40s and 50s if you live right in front of those fronts it almost goes directly from 50 to 70 like look here if you look at the interior of Kansas there is I mean the temperatures are in the 20s but then if you go almost the entire state's width into Missouri, you've got temperatures in the 60s and 70s. So this is a very, very strong cold front pushing air from, essentially the, this low pressure system is yanking air down from Canada in order to fuel the, the, the cold front. And so you've got extreme lows over here and you've got extreme highs over here. 
And so it's pushing, uh, it's essentially just allowing for this very strong system to move through. And then if you live in the South, you guys are, are doing pretty well. Parts of Texas itching up into the 90s, parts of Florida um, pushing up into the high 80s, mid to high 80s. And then if you live in um, the uh, New England area, you guys can expect some temperatures in the 40s and 50s, which is nice because you guys just dealt with some snow too. Uh, and then pretty much the rest of the country is either cold or very warm. The same can kind of be said for uh, Friday. And so these are the Friday high temperatures. And so you see this system kind of flattening out a little as it pushes to the north. And we see the, a clear frontal boundary right here. And so we've got cold air behind and warm air in front. And so this is pretty much the stage where the low pressure system is going to break down because it means that the cold front has reached the warm front and they formed a new type of front called an occluded front. And essentially occlusion is just when you have three different air masses. You've got cold air from behind, warm air in the front, and then cold air in the front. And cold fronts move quicker than warm fronts. So this cold front has met up with the warm front and has caused the air in front of it to elevate. So it's forcing convection in between the two fronts. And it's a, it's a, the first stage of the low pressure system dying. So we'll see the snow kind of subside and we'll see these cold temperatures kind of push their way back up into uh, Canada again and, and leave the United States alone. Temperatures throughout here are already starting to warm up a bit. We see less of those 20s and more of those 30s. Even parts of uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin warming back up into the 40s. However, that being said, all these areas that experienced this heavy snow, as it warms up, it's going to melt. And you could see flooding in rivers downstream. You could also see flooding anywhere that there was a significant amount of snow that melted. So that's a, that's a definite threat that you need to worry about. Um, the New England area warming up again. New York is getting back into the, the 70s, the 60s and 70s. And then Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, you guys are all going to be uh, solidly in the 50s. Florida, going to be in the er, mid-80s, not 90s yet. And parts of southern Texas will also be in the, the mid to upper 80s, maybe lower 90s. Moving to low temperatures, once again, you can see the system, cold air around it, warm air in this little, and this is what I call the warm sector. It's the technical definition of it. It's just the warm chunk of um, the low pressure system in between the cold front and the warm front. Um, and we see these monstrously low nighttime lows. So New England, going to be in the 20s. Great Plains, going to be in the 20s. Northern Midwest, Great Lake, Great Lakes region, going to be in the uh, 20s and 30s primarily. And if you live in this warm sector here, it's going to be nice. You're going to be have uh, low nighttime temperatures in the mid to upper 60s until you get to the Appalachian Mountains on the East Coast, and then you get into the 50s. And if you live along these fronts, low temperatures will be in the 50s. Now, pushing into Friday for the lows here, you can see that occlusion stage beginning, and um, we've got the cold air channeling in. However, the low temperatures out here are not as low as they were the night prior, except for in the Rocky Mountains, where you'll see some single-digit temperatures in, in places. But for the most part, you'll see temperatures in the um, 20s primarily, and then the 30s if you're just behind the front. Uh, this is going to be a cool night for almost all of America. Only parts, the only parts that are really warm are parts of Ohio and this little band coming down here just in front of the included front, sorry, occluded front. And then, uh, if you live directly around the Gulf of Mexico, which is just a heat sink. So if you live on the West coast, going to be cool too. temperatures in the thirties to fifties, uh, along the West coast. And so Basically, this is going to be a very cold night for most of America. Um, and I believe that's all. So I thank you all for watching my videos. And I thank you all for uh, getting me close to 200 subscribers. And I think everyone that's watched my videos the past few days, they have been hits. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all either on Thursday or on Friday. Thank you. Have a good one.